Thanks for joining us today. I have Mark from Alaska from Safe Home. He's going to talk about remote support and um, the technology. Um, Mark is the district manager of Safe Home for the state of Ohio. Mark focuses on the use of technology along with remote support services to increase and inspire self determination for those with disabilities for 18 years. Mark has been working with the community focusing, focusing on organizations to uh, provide an impact live. Take it away, Mark. Hey, thank you, Courtney. I appreciate the great introduction. So, and thanks for having myself. And I also have Liz here from Safe and Home. And so, Morning. Yeah, so Liz is gonna help out I'm new to the whole Facebook Live, so um, I know once I start sharing my screen, we have a short presentation today to really show how remote supports helps individuals live their most independent life that they're looking for. And I know Liz is going to be able to help me out a little bit, and Courtney, I'm sure as well, if you see something coming through on Facebook, I, again, I'm not as familiar with some of the social media sites on how questions can come through and all of that, but please just feel free to stop me at any time and we'll answer those questions as they come up. And at the end of the presentation, we also have, um, we'll have time as well for any questions that uh, individuals may be thinking upon as they get to watch the presentation. So thank you, Courtney. So I am going to share my screen and then hopefully, I haven't used Zoom in a little while, so hopefully the audio will work and everything. If not, just yell for me and we'll get it fixed. But uh, here we go. We're going to share a little slideshow presentation with everybody. Okay. All right. Does everybody see my screen okay? Yes. Yes. All right. Awesome. And again, I, I'm not able to see anybody at this point, so please just uh, cut me off if you have some questions that you're seeing come through. But again, we're talking about remote support services. It's all about empowering independent living um, for the individuals we support here in Ohio, as well as um, across the country. And we got a short video that we're gonna play here to start things off. This is Alex Cosma, and he heads up uh, our remote support division of Safe and Home. And so, He's gonna explain a little bit more in depth about how we do what we do to help individuals on a day-to-day -day basis. So this video is about uh, three minutes long. And so I'm gonna hit play and then we'll go from there. My name is Alex Cosma. I am the remote support training manager here at Safe and Home. The remote support team is a bunch of people who believe in a very powerful proposition independent living, dignity, full partnership in the game of human being for everyone that we work with in every capacity, both here at Safe and Home and in life. That proposition gives you a really powerful way of being while you're working with someone. Whatever struggles they may have going on, you know, X or Y or Z happening in their home life, and you get them on the line, it's an opportunity to fulfill on that proposition by being really curious wanting to know what's going on with them and leaving them with a sense of, hey, I stand for you and your independence and I've got your back. If something happens in the home, you can give me a call. You got something on your chest you need to get off, you can give me a call. And there's a team full of people in this building and they are all here for you in the exact same way. The goal of remote support in general is to help the individuals we support live independently, live lives with self-determination, and live lives with dignity. When we work with somebody on remote supports, we're working pretty much any circumstance in life, whether somebody's in their 20s and living on their first in their first place alone or in their 30s, you know, living with family or in their, you know, 50s or older. Uh, living with roommates in, in a home that they share out in the community. 
So our goal is to meet them wherever they are and help provide services that will next level their independence and decision making and give them the skills and support to go from where they are now to where they want to be in a relatively low touch way. They get to experience privacy, doing it for themselves, and knowing that they have the backstop of if they really run into something, remote supports is there. It's also there for passive things. One of the obstacles to independence may be something like a risk of falls or some other passive danger in the home. Uh, remote supports uses uh, sensors and other electronic tools um, to help detect patterns of activity and minimize those sorts of risks. Okay, so hopefully that was a, a short, quick little video that um, went a little bit deeper about what we're able to do in terms of, again, it's about empowering individuals to live their own lives and for us to be there when they need us, um, not the other way around. So it's a, a really, really cool thing, a change of dynamics um, in a sense as well. Um, Liz, any questions out there so far that you've seen? Nope, I don't see any coming through, Mark. Okay, so I'll just kind of continue here. We're going to talk a little bit about keeping that promise. So um, we do have the HCBS settings guidelines set forth by the federal government, um, and, and we follow that, right? That's the home and community-based uh, services guidelines. And in terms of that rule, at Safe and Home, we're following right alongside that, right? We're looking at what's important to the individual, for the individual and directed by them. And how do we do that? It starts off right from the initial get-go. So when someone reaches out to us, whether it's an individual, a case manager, um, a loved one, what we want to then do is have a consultation where we get to meet the individual, get to know them, ask a variety of questions um, to really determine what their goals are, what they want out of life. And then we can help set up a plan to move towards that utilizing remote supports and technology to help them. Yeah. Move to the next slide. And, and you've heard a little bit about this already, but remote supports, really what it's about, again, empowering individuals with intellectual developmental disabilities to live independently in their own homes and communities using remote support staff and assistive technology. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about who those staff are as we move throughout the, the session today, as well as talk about some of those technologies that we're using to provide that support. And before we get into some of those things, what we thought we would do is share another video. This is our second and uh, final video of today's session, uh, but this is independence for Emma. So Emma is an individual that um, we at Safe and Home get the, uh, the the privilege to help support on a day-to-day -day basis and show her and her mother get to share their story. This video is a little bit longer. It's actually also, I think it's gonna take us to another website. So Liz, I may need to get confirmation that this works for us because it will take us away from this. I may have to stop sharing for a second and, and reshare again. So hopefully it won't be too confusing, but we're gonna get to hear Emma and her mother here in just a second share their story. And that did not go as planned. So let's do this. I am going to stop sharing for a brief second. Bear with me and we are going to reshare the video. And I'm going to have to go to YouTube. So there may be a commercial. So and bear with that for a few brief seconds. It's some free advertising. Yeah, and I don't know what the the I don't know what the commercial is going to be. That's always a uh, like uh oh, what's going to pop up? Okay, I think I might have got us right after that commercial, so working out pretty good. So here we go. This is Emma's story. Emma is a 24 year old autistic. She has a seizure disorder and she is what we refer to as um, an unreliable speaker. So she has some speech. Bye bye, mate. It's been nice, 
she's developing more and more as she gets older and is more fluent with the letter board and her communication. She is getting more kind of organic speech, which is actually what she wants to say. But like a lot of autistics, a lot of what she says is not what she wants to say. Hey, Emma. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Say good morning. Can you say so? Early diagnosis, it was very intense. There's just no other way around it. It wasn't really very easy to leave the home. We had two other children, and she seemed to be in distress a lot of the time. There was a lot of screaming, and she had no um, reliable way to communicate with us. She was having seizures, and she was very unhappy, very distressed, and so were we. She had never been formally taught in school, and one of her early responses to us was that, I have been listening all of my life. Yeah, it's overwhelming to a parent, right? I remember the first Christmas, after um, we started using the letter board, our speech therapist, Elizabeth asked, what do you want for Christmas? And she said, oh, my parents have given me everything I, I need or want. What I'd really like is for my mother to read to me. But the minute we knew and she made that request, the journey began and it was very exciting. And I asked her if she could ever see herself living in her own apartment and she said, yes, that's absolutely what I want for my life. I want that life. And that was when we had to start thinking of everything differently. Because after someone communicates something to you, we needed to make it happen. We need to deliver on that promise. So we didn't have a lot of this figured out when we moved in, but we kind of made the jump and then we figured it out. And fortunately, early in that journey, we came across our friends at Safe and Home. So if we have someone who does not um, talk or is not just going to pick up the phone and call us, we have to have a way to be able to check on her. She has to be able to reach out to us um, to let us know she doesn't feel good, she's out of milk, she needs groceries, she wants to see us, she's bored, she's lonely, whatever. So we knew that we needed to set up a system to do that. So we knew we needed some type of ring technology at the door. We needed mom or dad or a caregiver to get a ping to know she was safe to open the door. We wanted to know what was going on at night. We now know that when we get our, our um, report from Safe and Home, that it is not uncommon for Emma to be up 20 times between 2 and 4 a.m. Um, doing I don't know what, they're not cameras, which is wonderful, it protects her privacy, but we know she's up and out of her bed and doing something in the bedroom. So if she's having more seizures the next day or she's really unregulated, I now know why. The main thing we're using our Safe and Home tablet for now is for check-ins. Um, she is used to hearing the ring, having her go over, touch the tablet, and seeing one of her friends at Safe and Home you know, greet her and her to get comfortable with them and have a conversation. But what we're hoping for Emma is it's going to be an opportunity for her to reach out if there is an emergency. Emma and her friends should be able to go out for a walk by themselves. They would not need us to always be going with them, that they're learning safety on the streets. But with all of them wearing the device, um, we know if anything goes wrong, we could always find them with the GPS system. I don't even think I understood what a big deal it is for someone to take care of their own medications. You know, she's mastered this huge task that she needs to do to be able to live independently. So the device goes off with the beeper. She may or may not get up to it right away, but the beeper will go on until she addresses the medication issue. And mom or dad get to continue to do whatever they need to do wherever they are. I mean, we cannot fake the joy that she is experiencing in her life. I mean, she is living a self-determined life. This is what she wants and she's doing it and we could not be prouder. I would encourage families to talk to Safe and Home, do it earlier and get this technology in place so the parents and the child, when they're ready to transition out, it would already be in place and they would have that confidence to do it. Okay. Uh-oh. I still have audio, so apologize for that. The, the sponsorships are paying the, the bills here, so bear with me. 
as we get back to the meeting. All right. So before I get back into the presentation, I just wanted to make sure while I could see as there and, and to let everybody, I guess, know who may be offline, Facebook, if you have questions, I think you could chat those. Again, please let us know. We will try to get answers throughout today's presentation regarding remote supports and, and how we could help people. So I don't see any in the chat here. So I am going to share my screen once again and get the presentation slide. Does anybody see anything coming through Facebook before I move forward? Does not appear so. Nope, nothing no. right now. No. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. We are going to get back into it here. So bear with me for just one more second. Okay. And we're going to go forward at this point. So again, I know we don't have a a large, large audience here in the actual presentation itself. Again, we may be getting joined by quite a few in Facebook. So if we did have others here today, we would ask, what did you see in the video that resonated most with you? And again, you know, we may have some individuals that get to see this uh, presentation later uh, that are looking for more independence. We may have loved ones that get to see this video, maybe case managers. So what resonated to you? Be thinking about that as we uh, move forward throughout the presentation. And then at Safe and Home, that's what we're here for, right? So if somebody, independence resonates to them in terms of medication administration, well, we could help with that. Maybe it's somebody who's looking for a little additional support when it comes to visitor safety. Reach out. We can talk about that as well and help develop a program around that. So just be thinking about that as you um, watch the rest of today's presentation. What resonates most with you? So next slide here, we're going to talk a little bit about the five elements of remote support services. And at the heart of that, right, is the individual that we're helping support. In the case that we just watched, that was Emma, right? She was our main focus, who we're trying to help support, live her best life, what she's looking to do on a day-to-day -day basis. One of her goals in that video was to move into her own apartment. And so we started designing a program and supports built around that as her um, long-term goal. Up in the upper left-hand corner of the elements, we have remote support staff. Again, we have dedicated staff who are trained just as all other DSPs in the state of Ohio are, who are the ones that are providing the day-to-day -day supports. And again, that looks different for everybody. We'll talk about what that could look like in a variety of different ways moving forward. In the bottom left, you have the sensor technology. So Emma's video, as well as earlier in the first video, you got to see a little bit of that. Um, we're talking very small technology, open close sensors, motion sensors, um, technology that without taking away any sort of privacy, right? These aren't cameras. They are non-invasive, very small. You don't even know that they're there, but they're helping in a variety of ways for remote supports and for individuals to gain information about patterns of movement, um, possibly when somebody's opening a door in the middle of the night, um, when medicines are taken, et cetera. And so it's, it's really um, nice technology that can be utilized and really doesn't impact anybody's uh, life from a day-to-day -day perspective. In the upper right, you have your weekly reports. Haven't talked too much about this, right? Uh, but all this technology that we're incorporating with the remote supports, we're case noting everything that we do when we're when we're meeting with somebody, doing a daily check-in, medication check-in, whatever it might be. We are case noting that, and that information is kept and then forwarded on to the appropriate individuals. For some, that may be case manager on a weekly basis. The individuals themselves may need some of the data. Um, if it's a seizure um, type of situation, they can get data that is a historical record of how their seizure activity has been going over the last few weeks and few months. So we can provide a variety of data for individuals to help them in their day-to-day. -day. And in the bottom right, we have that assi the assistive tech, right? We've all heard tech, tech, tech. Well, at Safe and Home, we incorporate over 80 different pieces of technology. And at the end of the day, those pieces of technology are really designed to fit into somebody's program, to be the tools that we use 
to connect with remote supports and provide ultimately the day-to-day -day supports that someone is looking for. Some of those devices, again, you've seen in the videos, medication dispensers, video doorbells, tablets is a great way for us to communicate, just like we're doing on today's um, Zoom meeting. Um, you might've saw the small device that uh, Emma was carrying along with her. That's a, a geocom device, which is a mobile communication and geolocation device, which is very helpful for many different people in many different ways. And again, these pieces of technology are used differently by different people. And again, because what? We're all different, right? And we all have different needs, wants, desires, et cetera. So that is the five elements. So next we talk a little bit again about the person being supported, right? This is all about being person-centered. As we just showed with the last slide, the individual that we're supporting is at the, is at the heart, at the middle of everything that we're trying to do. And it's about developing individualized solutions. So again, this is not a cookie cutter approach. It's not, here's 10 pieces of technology for everybody the same thing. It's the exact opposite. It really starts with conversations, getting to know the individual, and then from there developing an individualized solution. And it's really a learning environment um, for the individual. And they get to learn on their own pace as well. And we have a few examples of that, I believe, moving forward in the presentation. And for some and for many, it's that next step to independence, right? If you're able to have more control over your medication administration without mom or dad telling you what to do on a day-to-day -day basis, if it's you having control of when you want to check in because you heard a noise outside and giving a call to remote supports, it's allowing the individual to take those next steps um, for independence in their life. And then remote support staff are always available 24-7. That's, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Individuals have different needs at different times of the day, just like we all do. And if you really want that support and need it, you can simply reach out in a variety of different ways, whether it's tablet, uh, geocom, phone, and our staff are going to be available to help individuals um, through those times that they need some extra support. Next slide speaks to a little bit here about, you know, again, our, our name is Safe and Home. Um, sometimes we like to say we're also safe in community because some of this technology remote supports can actually, again, go with somebody as they go to work, as they are out and about going to eat. Those, that mobile technology can be brought with them. But within the home, remote supports can work in a variety of ways and can work pretty much in any, any part of the home. So the bathroom, the kitchen, the living room, bedroom, you name it. There's a variety of technology incorporated with the remote supports that can be used to benefit an individual. Obviously, certain areas of the home, there's additional um, levels of risk involved. If you're cooking, right, there's, there's risk for all of us that we may leave a stove on, that we may have a fall because of water. Well, we have a variety of different technologies available combined with remote supports that can um, let us know if a stove was left on and automatically turn it off. And then we can also touch base with an individual to see what happens. So just keep in mind, safe and home, we truly mean the entire home, as well as we're, we're moving into that outside space as well with some of the mobile technology that is out there for us to stay connected with individuals. Next slide, and, and this slide needs a little bit updated, but we just wanted to point out that remote supports is still a relatively new type of support that's out there. Um, but currently, and I know we show 15 states on here, two of those are where we have remote support centers, but we have clients in 13 states um, at this time, and that's growing pretty much on a month to month basis. Um, and we have served over 700 individuals here in the state of Ohio alone. And when you see up top the logged support hours, 635,000, again, a reason I say that this slide needs a little updating, but this shows the growth. We are now well over 2 million logged support hours. So, and that grows by the day. And again, when this slide was produced, I think it was only about seven, eight months ago, we had 60 different in integrated devices. We're now over 80. So that just tells you, right? Technology is evolving. Our company is evolving. The number of people that we're able to support um, is also evolving. So really, really exciting. But again, we're just touching the surface. Um, you know, if you really think about it, 
this is a very new support. And that's why myself and Liz were here today to help educate. And then we make ourselves available throughout the state in a variety of ways to help educate throughout. So I know we we work closely with Delaware County and we look forward to some hopefully some in-person events coming up as well. So be on the lookout for those. Next slide here. Um, just wanted to kind of give a few examples. Names and pictures have been changed, um, obviously for HIPAA, but just a, a couple of individuals that we're helping support currently. Um, one of our individuals, Marty, you know, moderate intellectual disability. So before remote supports, maybe, you know, he left home a little bit at any time, day or night, oftentimes ended up in some dangerous situations. Um, met with Marty and his team prior to starting any sort of supports. Um, we're able to put a part of that plan, some motion sensor technology combined with remote supports. Um, that's a big key part of this, right, is um, to help have those daily check-ins where someone feels like there's somebody here in my home to help me whenever I need that. And I could push a button and be connected. And so there's a dramatic reduction of leaving home at risky times for Marty. So that's awesome to be able to see. And then Marty calls in remote supports to check in whenever he needs. We also do some scheduled check-ins for Marty as well throughout the day um, that are predetermined times. So it works out really well. Um, next, we have Nate. Um, again, so, uh, you know, in terms of a disability, mild IDD, autism, anxiety. So before remote supports, there was anxiety when someone was at the door. Um, also, mom was his medication reminder system. And, and Nate was expressing a desire to move away from, you know, mom is great, I'm a parent, I'm helping our, our children on a day-to-day -day basis, but they're also wanting to grow and, and grow in their own independence. So in terms of Nate, we were able to incorporate some technology and remote supports, video doorbell technology for visitor safety, a communication tablet for wellness and medication management check-ins. So I believe for Nate, twice a day, we're calling at certain times to, to talk about um, his medications and see how it's going for him. We are non-directive, so we're not telling Nate what to do. We're not telling Marty what to do. We're not telling Katie what to do. What we are trained is, is to listen and have a conversation and ask Nate, how did your medications go this morning? Everything okay? Did you, and provide some reminders about, um, did you eat some food? Did you drink some milk or water? Um, so it's a different relationship than one in which we're telling somebody um, what to do, which individuals have more buy-in and, and there's more growth when it comes to that um, you know, type of support. Um, and so with remote supports, Nate is actually in college out of state, still re receives support from remote supports. Uh, mom and dad have peace of mind knowing his safety and well-being are taken care of. So pretty, pretty cool story there. And, and then we have Katie here. Um, and Katie has schizophrenia, bipolar. Um, what was happening with Katie, she would constantly call 911 or her case managers quite a bit throughout the day. Obviously doing that caused a variety of other issues. And the main thing was she wasn't getting the help that she was really truly um, wanting. And so when we met with Katie, her team, and, um, and got to learn a little bit more about her, we were able to incorporate again some technology, remote support staff, and Katie developed the capacity to solve everyday problems. So instead of calling 911 um, for a lost item within the home, as we started to work with her and talk with her on a day-to-day -day basis when these things would come up, and, and again, having staff that are trained to listen and to identify um, ways in which we could help, um, Katie has taken more of those things on herself. And so um, she's no longer calling 911. So that's a huge success story. She is contacting remote supports um, on a day-to-day -day basis. We do some check-ins as well. Um, and, and we are able to assist her in a, in a more positive manner. So really, really cool to, to get to see how things are going for her. And so a couple of things really want to hit home here. Remote supports, it is a service. It's not a thing. It's not a singular device. It's not a tablet. It's not a geo. It is a service. Um, and it's not about replacing humans with technology. Not at all. It's about everything working together. Um, it, is, it is a trained workforce connecting and supporting people through technology. So again, the technology and the way in which we're able to use it is as the tools um, to provide provide that service. Bear with me as I get to the next slide here. 
any questions that have popped up in the chat, please let me know. I'll just continue on forward unless there is something there that I could address. Give it a brief second there. Sounds like nothing has come in yet, but that is okay. What happens many times, um, we do a lot of these educational presentations and inevitably, and at the end of this, I will have my contact information. Um, what happens is we, we spur on a lot of thought, a lot of questions, um, and then we connect in, in a variety of other ways. Again, I'm gonna make myself available as much as possible to, to those in Delaware County. I, I live just next door in Franklin County, so I'm, I'm here to, to support any way that I can and answer questions as we move forward. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, report, the remote support staff. They are trained in a variety of ways. Again, they're, they're meeting all the criteria as training from a DSP perspective in the state of Ohio. We also have our own internal trainings. One of those is ACT, Acceptance Commitment Therapy. Again, as we talk about um, how we interact with individuals, it's about listening, it's about guiding, it's about providing reminders. It's not about telling somebody what to do. It's about if we hear somebody you know, experiencing anxiety, helping them identify ways to make them feel better um, and so forth. So again, non-directive, we're developing authentic relationships. Um, there's a lot of stability involved with this um, and it helps individuals develop their own decision-making skills. And again, we're, we're going through those state required trainings and, and HIPAA compliant. So human to human connection what it is what it's all about. Just not having somebody directly in the home, but available when somebody needs them. So let's talk about a few different areas. We've hit on some of these already, but if you're thinking about, if you're a case manager and you have individuals that are maybe experiencing some of these different uh, areas where we can help be a solution, just reach out to us, reach out to myself. Again, my contact info um, will be available at the end of this presentation. And again, I'm, I'm a partner with Delaware County, so they've got my information as well to help out. But what are some of those areas again? Seizure management is, is a huge uh, way in which we're able to help um, in terms of utilization of technology and remote supports because seizure management is many different things. And for, for some people, it's staying hydrated and we can provide those reminders throughout the day. For others, it's a proper diet. For others, it's times of anxiety that can spur on seizures. So remote supports can really play a role in helping um, diminish some of those uh, times when those may occur. Medication management, again, we talked about that with Emma a little bit. We help a lot of people in this area just with those little extra reminders um, to help ensure that they're, they're properly taking medicines on a day-to-day -day basis. Transition age youth. Um, and again, there's a lot under this umbrella as individuals are, are looking at growing in their own independence. Maybe they're in high school, um, maybe they're in college, maybe they're looking at, uh, you know what, I, I want it. my goal is to get my own apartment. Well, let's have some conversations now and let's incorporate maybe some remote support, some technology ahead while they're still living with mom or dad so that it helps prepare them for when they are moving into their own place and maybe bring in remote supports and some of the technology along with them. Um, elopement and wandering, again, we help in a variety of ways in terms of utilizing remote supports and technology in those areas. Kitchen safety, again, is huge, You know whether it's cooking, uh, whether it's uh, you know meal prep, et cetera, we have different technology, such an automatic uh, stove shutoff that um, is, a, is a really, really um, cool piece of technology that can enable somebody to cook their own meals, make sure that that stove is shut off, and at the same time incorporating remote support. So if a, sh if a stove shutoff is engaged, we'll be alerted to that as well, because that's not a normal occurrence in someone's day to day. And so we can check in to make sure they're okay. You know, what happened? Oh, I, I stepped away to watch, uh, watch the end of a movie and I forgot. Okay, cool. Well, it engaged. Your stove is now off. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, and so we're there to kind of make sure everything is, is working smoothly and the individual is safe. And visitor safety is, is another huge uh, area in which we help people. Just a quick story. I know we've heard a few others, but one of my first individuals that I was able to work with um, down in Southern Ohio, moved into his own apartment, you know, was been taken advantage of in the past and, and really was not feeling so, uh, so well about uh, if somebody came to his door. So we were able to incorporate um, a video doorbell, a tablet technology, 
some sensor technology as well. And so if somebody came to the door, he had full control. You know, if, if he knew who was at the door, his girlfriend, he would just let him in, no big deal. But if there was somebody at the door, he wasn't sure who they were, what they were doing, and he was maybe a little anxious about it, he could reach out to us, our remote supports team. We could actually have that conversation through the video doorbell on behalf of the individual and help them um, you know, make sure that that's a, a positive visitor experience. So there's so many different ways in which these six areas we can help people. It's really about starting those conversations, and then we can delve further into how we can help support. And we're going to go to the next slide here. So we're nearing the end of the, close to the end of the presentation. We have about a couple slides left. And so some of you that are out there, you may be hearing this on Facebook Live. You may be, have joined us in the, the presentation itself, or you'll be watching this recording later. Um, how do we start? Like, this sounds like a lot. What do we do? Uh, well, Again, myself, Liz, Safe and Home, we are here to make this process as easy on everybody as much as possible. So it's really just about identifying those. Um, if you're a case manager, again, talking with your caseload, those that, that you're helping on a day-to-day, -day, who's striving for more independence? Who has a few additional goals of a little bit more alone time? Well, from that standpoint, you know, somebody says, yeah, that's me. I, I'm looking, you know, I want you know, a couple hours at night or, you know, I want to sleep um, without having somebody in my home in the evenings, whatever it may be, um, feel free, reach out to us. We can be brought in on the conversation and see if we can help in some way um, help the individual achieve those goals. So we'll set up a consultation, doesn't cost anything. Um, we'll conduct uh, that consult. Um, we'll create a, a proposal. We'll write everything. Um, together in terms of how it's going to meet the individual's goals. So we put that um, specific language into our proposals. I used to work for the Franklin County Board of DD, so I'm able to, to, to tie in what I once knew into my current role, and I think it works out well in terms of creating those person-centered proposals for individuals. And we incorporate that ISP suggested language. And then again, once that occurs and somebody's ready to move forward, um, we'll schedule installation of the equipment, we'll train on how the technology works. We're going to be there the whole time. Um, you know, the, the staff that installs the equipment is safe and home staff. If there's ever an issue, we're going to troubleshoot that. If we need to replace a, a piece of equipment, we can do that as well. And then we provide any compliance documentation, those reports as needed. Um, and again, there's a lifetime service and equipment maintenance. So individuals don't have to worry about if something you know fails, if something needs to be replaced, if a battery needs change, we're there to help with those things and make it as easy as possible. And again, just really quickly, some of those steps to, to help someone um, start on remote supports is as easy as, again, reaching out to myself. Um, we'll set up a consultation. Um, we can make that happen very quickly, uh, depending on the, the week. We can meet as early as sometimes the next day or a few days uh, you know, down the road. And then we'll have that consult. We'll get to know the individual, ask a lot of great questions, and then um, be able to, again, develop a proposal that is person-centered. Typically within 24 hours, we'll send that back to the case manager. And then at that point, um, the board would approve that. And then we work towards installation and services starting soon thereafter. Okay, and let's see here. That, my friends, brings us to the end of the official presentation. I know I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here in a second, and um, I'll once again be able to see those that have joined virtually, and we'll be able to see if there's any questions via Facebook. But I wanted to make sure everybody has my contact information, so my email, my phone number are there for, for all. We do have a QR code that'll take you directly to our Safe and Home website as well. And again, I know there may not be too many questions today, and that's okay. Those may come um, at a later date, and I will be here to help answer those. So I'll give it one second here so everybody can, again, if you need to capture my information, feel free to do so. Again, I'm gonna be working with uh, Courtney and Chase to make sure uh, that they always have my information available as well. So at this time, I will stop sharing and then we'll see if there's any questions. So 
again, that kind of takes us to the end of the, the virtual presentation part of things. I wanted to see, it looks like there may be a chat, but I'm not sure if that's a question or not. It might've been just me putting your email in there. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Thank I'm you thinking that if they're on Facebook Live, they aren't able to, they're not going through Zoom. So questions won't, from the Facebook audience would come here, but I think we had a couple of Zoom attendees that oh, okay. didn't have any questions, but yeah. And so if you're on Facebook again, I know Courtney, you know, we're going to work together, Chase, we're going to make sure that if you reach out and have questions that we're here to help answer those, I guess I'd ask, you know, whether it's Courtney, Kelly, or Chase, were there any questions from, from your perspectives on what you've heard today? I, I hope there was some cool stuff that you heard and, and learned maybe a few new things here while we were talking. No, actually, I think I'm good, I'm good Mark, because like I said, I talked to you in length a couple months ago and we had a good conversation. So I don't have any questions. Okay. Yeah, so. I, I don't think I do either. I'm, I'm looking on Facebook and I don't see any right now, but of course with these recordings, the, the beauty is that people can, can view at their convenience. And so uh, if questions pop up there in the future, um, we'll, we'll definitely pass those along to, to you. So um, you can get in touch with those folks and answer their questions. Yeah, okay, that's awesome. No, I love that. I know I, I'm owing uh, Mike Dancho a visit, so I'll probably be over at your office here in the next uh, you know, couple of weeks to say hello. And again, I, if anything, I want all of you to know, as well as all of those out there in, in Facebook land, that I am local, I am here, I am always available. So I look forward to getting to meet uh, as many of you out there that are, um, again, having those questions, striving for greater independence, that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a lot of fun and 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 love what I get to do on a day-to-day -day basis helping people. So, and, and again, thank you for allowing us to come today and be a part of this because this is this is amazing. And and again, um, just very very happy that you guys were able to to have us be a part of this. Thank you very much. Thanks, You're Courtney and Kelly and Chase. I echo exactly what Mark said. Thanks for giving us an opportunity to share what we do.